obviously uh, a woman of faith raised you. Yes. I know you had a stint in the streets. Yes. And what I find so fascinating and remarkable about your story is you've done so much in the C-suites, but you also have a real backstory in the streets. So number one, how does a young man who was raised by a grandmother who poured nothing but the Lord into you get into the streets? And ultimately, where does that land you? Um, so um, it, the, everything that I'm saying now uh, mm -hmm. about the blessings also apply to um, the streets, right? So in the streets, um, I, I kept the, the good uh, that I, my grandmother brought into me, but I, that same spirit I had to the street guy. So for instance, I've always in some form worked in entertainment. So my initial entree to the streets as always was like selling front row seats and backstage passes and things to the dudes who uh, in the streets. So there you meet other celebrities, there you meet the athlete of that community or the high roller of that community. And you begin to get those relationships um, from a good point. You know, you're not necessarily doing street work, as they say, um, or putting in work as they we when I was growing up. But uh, I began to see that um, I, I was building a, a strong a relationship or Rolodex in the street. So, you know, guy in uh, D.C., uh, had a good time with his wife and that he, he'll hit me and be like, yo, my man in Richmond wanted to buy them tickets. My man in Ohio wanted to buy them tickets. So now I know all the street guys from, again, New York to California from, you know, a relationship that was strong, but good. Cause I, I didn't have to hustle or do the things that they did. Um, but I took care of them. I serviced them, made sure they had a good time. If you bought tickets for me, I'm checking on you. I'm making sure you're good. I'm making sure you get to meet somebody if that's what you want. Those type of things. So I build those relationships. But now remember, I had established a relationship in New York with Doug from the beginning. So automatically, um, you know, my friends uh, from Haiti and uh, different places uh, began. We, we had a, like a brotherhood bond, even though other people were fearful of them or had a negativity they they were like, you know, brothers to me. So I could bring them into the place. And then somebody would be like, yo, like, how, how Jack get in here? And I'm like, it's my brother, my cousin. We good, you know, like, don't worry about it. We have that relationship. He's here with me and we, you know, came to have a good time. You know, no problems. But if you want to make one, there could be one. Um, so I was able to always like uh, work both sides of the fence like that. But as people in the street, took more trust, they gave me more responsibility and uh, a greater access to the streets. Um, and unfortunately, uh, while I was trying to play both roles, um, I got caught up in a, a RICO conspiracy. Um, and you know how RICOs work, everybody's in trouble. If two people are uh, commit or know of a crime without uh, calling the police or telling on anybody or whatever the case may be, you're guilty. So um, that uh, led me to have a stronger bond with them because I'm gonna just go do my time and come home because I benefited greatly from like, you know, where else was I gonna make that kind of money? You know, sometimes 30, 40 grand a week, you know, um, just from having relationships and uh, a great mind and ability on how to make things work. How much time did you ultimately- Nice way to put it. <laughs> How much time did you ultimately receive? Uh, five years. Okay, so you did the straight five years? Uh, well, you know, you get good time off and uh, I participate in, uh, in a federal system drug program that cut off 11 months out of my time as well. Okay, so you come back home, you hit the streets, didn't tell on anybody, Phil's name is good. Obviously that makes you even more uh, impressive and, and reliable to people in the streets. People can trust you. They know Phil Robinson, my information is good with him. He went, he did his time. You come back say, home. Though, I, wanna, I wanna put a point in there, because you said 
Like you go do your time, you came home and your name is good. Um, no matter what you do, and I, because your show is about um, making power moves and hustling, it's important that people always remember Prez, no matter what you do, there's gonna be 10% uh, of the people who just don't like you, who got something to say, who bring up uh, something negative that they don't even know what they're talking about because we live in a world now of, of instant, you know, uh, success or media or whatever. And they, they you're, so you're never gonna always be, your name is good, but if you can keep it 80% good, you good. That's very important because people give up when they hear, like, you know, they make a, uh, they hit a speed bump and then they, on the other side of the bump, they hit negativity. They, they, they kind of go into a hold or hide. Whereas at those times when I hit a bump uh, and I went away, when I came home, I didn't immediately seek to reestablish the relationship with the streets. I went back to what my, what brought the streets to me. And that was my ability to work in entertainment, to uh, do the skill that I know. So uh, one of the things is that I, I never talk about, but it's important that I put it in perspective because I don't want people to think that it's just that simple or easy. But in prison is just like a, a society that's just like outside. So um, there was a, a guy that worked in the library and I um, bartered with him uh, on a regular basis so that he would collect all of the articles about uh, Magic Johnson, a guy named T.D. Jakes and another guy named uh, Deion Sanders that was Jakes's like um, uh, son in their ministry at that time. So by the time I came home, I knew I had a little relationship with Magic Johnson from uh, before going away um, and him coming to so many of the Eddie Murphy Raw Tour dates that when I came home, I wanted to know about everything that he was doing and within, a month or two of being home, uh, the Lord made it a way for me to meet Magic Johnson again. You know, I wanted to to establish that part of your life because th th there's this uh, Donnie McClurkin song I I'm sure you are familiar with, We Fall Down But We Get Up. Yes. And um, for anybody who's watching this in video form, who's listening to this in podcast form on one of the streaming services, it's important for you to listen to Phil's story and understand you can hit rock bottom. You can make mistakes. Your life doesn't always need to go without incident. Sunshine and flowers. I mean, we, we never, you're not gonna have that every day. You're not. You know, or otherwise you're not human. You you might as well just go on to heaven. Don't pass, <laughs> you know, don't stop. Just keep, you know, keep moving. You you good. Nobody that we know is that way. N nobody around you um, has not had bumps that they have not overcome. And nobody in their life has had a bump that doesn't in some way seem to follow you. You know, no matter how successful I am, Somebody will always, you know, bring up the fact that I, I went to prison for something else. I've been told, you know, that you, I went for, you know, all types of reasons that I'm like, wow, amazed. Um, so people are going to bring up those negativities. Um, and I, I don't uh, have uh, a lot um, to say about those days, but I have to like reinforce that even though people see or, or speak or do negativity as you are, are seeing your rise, it is important that you don't look back, that you don't pick up that luggage. Because guess what? Since that day, Magic Johnson is my man. We, we, I, I've had bumps with him. I've had- No, stop, you know, stop, stop, stop there, Phil, because you, 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 while you were in prison, you mentioned, um, you asked a guy who worked in the library, to save articles of three people because you needed to keep yourself current on what Magic Johnson was doing. Uh, who, who, who were the other two that you mentioned? T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. And Deion Sanders. And Deion Sanders. This is, again, it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. You, by all intents and purposes, 
you're away from the world. Yeah, and but you should. found a way to keep yourself abreast. And this goes to one of the things that I admire about you. It's it's always strategy. It's always intentional. You somehow, even under the worst circumstances, doing time, made it your business. I'm going to continue to learn. I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to position myself. Even though I'm in this position now, I'm going to position myself so when I get out of here, I can hit the ground running. And I love that because people give themselves too many excuses too often not to continue to move forward, even if they can't move forward in the way that they think that they should. So that's great. You come out, you get you get released. But I want to make a point on that, though. Go ahead. Because um, while, though, uh, I was doing that, I kept the goal of, although now she had now passed away, I wanted to make my grandmother proud. Like, I'm going to, you know, I made a mistake. You're, you're, I, you're still looking down on me. And I want to make you proud uh, just as much as I disappointed you by being here. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.